Chapter Ten of the Tale of Buster Bumblebee. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Dion Gines. The Tale of Buster Bumblebee by Arthur Scott Bailey. Chapter Ten. Buster makes a speech. At first, when he found himself in the grip of what he was sure must be robber fly buster bumblebee was so alarmed that he could not even scream but in a moment or two he found his voice and he shrieked help help in a most frantic tone hoping that someone would come and save him but nobody came and buster expected every instant to feel the cruel beak of the robber fly when there was a sudden commotion behind his back somebody else cried out now and buster knew the voice too yes buster was sure that peevish peggy had come to help him but there was one thing that puzzled him peevish peggy seemed to be fully as frightened as buster himself at least her cries sounded as if she were in great terror probably she's afraid the robber fly has hurt me buster thought and he reflected that in spite of her sharp tongue peevish peggy was more kind-hearted than he had ever dreamed the next instant buster felt himself suddenly released at the same time something swept him off the clover top and he barely managed to save himself from a bad fall somewhere he could hear a loud buzz as of several angry voices but he did not care to show himself enough to find out what was happening for the time being he was content to stay snugly hidden among the thick clover leaves after a while the uproar ceased but even then buster bumblebee was in no hurry to leave his shelter when he did at last reach home he found the whole family much upset everybody was talking at once and in a household of more than two hundred that meant that the noise was almost deafening naturally buster bumblebee wanted to know what was the matter it was a long time however before any one would or could listen to him but at last he succeeded in getting the ear of the trumpeter haven't you heard the news she asked the robber fly came to the clover patch today and peevish peggy had a very narrow escape if it hadn't been for several other workers who happened to be gathering clover nectar nearby there's no telling where she would be now where is she buster inquired resting in bed the trumpeter explained even buster wondered how she could rest with all that racket in the house she's had a bad fright poor thing the trumpeter added buster bumblebee suddenly grew much excited and he climbed up on a table and shouted for everybody to be quiet i don't believe you know about me he cried as soon as the house was still the robber fly attacked me but i don't need to go to bed i'm not the least bit nervous several of the family near him began to titter and the queen herself stepped forward and commanded buster to hop down from the table at once he obeyed promptly but he was quite puzzled no one seemed to believe what he said and it was a long time before he learned what had actually happened at last a spiteful worker informed him that he had never been in the clutches of the robber fly at all peevish peggy and some of her companions had played a trick on buster because of his boasting she had seized him when he wasn't looking and he had screamed so loud that the robber fly who happened to be near had heard him then the robber fly had rushed up and seized peevish peggy who had promptly let go of buster bumblebee the worker who told these things to buster bumblebee actually laughed in his face and buster was so surprised and so crestfallen that he couldn't say a word for a long time and never again did buster mention the robber fly's name end of chapter ten buster makes a speech recording by dion Gines, salt lake city utah